uh, as, as we were discussing earlier, California gets a lot of oil. This is not Nevada. We're not Arizona. As a state, we get a lot of water. A lot of water falls out of the sky in the form of rain or snow on California. In a given year, in an average year, about 200 million acre feet of water will fall upon California. We have a drought, it's 150. Have a big year, it's 250. But it averaged out around 200 million acre feet. Of that, 70% will either evaporate or flow into the ground, leaving about 70 million acre feet to actually run off either immediately, immediately during a rainstorm or slowly uh, from the melting of the snowpack. Of that 70 million acre feet, total human use is about 40 million acre feet. Agriculture uses about 30 million acre feet and the other 10, actually about nine, is used by non-agricultural human use, taking showers, brushing your teeth, watering your lawn, commercial, industrial, all the other stuff. So that's the allocation of water as it stands right now. And that doesn't count the groundwater, which actually amounts to about a third of the overall water supply. It, water in California is not a hydrological problem. It's not an engineering problem, it's a political problem. It's the trying to get the political will to allocate and price and distribute that water in some sort of rational basis. And it's very complicated because water in California is tied up in jillions of water rights and water contracts and all this sort of stuff. I mean, in any kind of logical world, for example, the Imperial Irrigation District would not have the legal right to take three quarters of the water from the, Sac from the Colorado River to which California is entitled, but it does. It gets 3.3 million acre feet of the 4.4 million acre feet that California can take out of the river every year. Logically, that makes no sense, but it is a practical fact, a legal fact of life right now. So the question is, should water be reallocated differently at the same time that we have more water storage because of global warming, we're probably gonna get more of our precipitation in the form of rain and less in the form of snow. So we're gonna lose the natural reservoir of the snowpack, or at least a lot of it, and we should be building unnatural reservoirs to probably make up for that, or to sink some of that water into the underground supply. Logically, but the water is not logical any more than politics is logical. We should be probably reallocating water. We probably should be concentrating agricultural water on the highest value crops and not on the lowest value crops. Does it make sense to, and I don't know the answer, this is a question rather than an answer. Does it make sense to use tremendous amounts of water to grow alfalfa and ship that alfalfa to China? Because essentially, we're shipping water to China when we do that. It may not make any sense. Maybe that water should be more expensive than it is. Maybe the rice growers up in the upper Sacramento Valley should not have full access to all water for virtually zero cost. But they have pre-existing water rights, and so forth and so forth and so forth. Now, the state, because of the drought, or as using the drought as a rationale, take your pick, is beginning to do this kind of a process. The first step on it, step on that path, is groundwater regulation, which, was, which is going to take years to implement, maybe even decades. But while that's going on, the next step is on the verge of beginning. And that is going to be probably Armageddon. It's going to be the war to end all other, the mother of all battles. And that's going to be over water rights whether water rights are absolutely sacrosanct and cannot be violated in any way, or whether, in fact, they can be abrogated in some way. The, when the State Water Resources Control Board laid down its conservation guidelines, there was a very small water district on the west side of the Sacramento San Joaquin Delta near Tracy that said, go stick it in your ear. We have senior water rights, you can't tell us what to do. And the board said, oh yes we can. And they said, no you can't. 
and they were headed for a legal confrontation that would have settled the issue, perhaps have begun to settle the issue of whether the state, whether water rights are inviolable or can in fact be abrogated. And both sides then kind of backed off. No, nobody wanted the World War III, I guess. But it's coming. It's coming. There's going to be some sort of a test case or something that's going to throw the whole issue of water rights into question. Now, if out of all of this, if out of groundwater regulation and, and water rights uh, reconfiguration and everything, you came up with a more rational system of water distribution that benefited everybody, that, that took advantage of the fact that we do have quite a supply of water in California, if it's handled correctly, that might be a good thing. But like all other processes, it's going to be subject to that nasty old thing called politics. So when you open the door to groundwater regulation or you open the door to water rights recalculation, you better have a seat at that table because those who have seats are certainly going to be protecting their interests as best they can, and those who don't have seats will be the eaten once again. And this is the best, as big as it gets. When you talk about water, you're talking about something about, about probably about as important as it, it possibly can be, and it's coming. Because of the drought, because of global warming, because of a whole variety of things, the big, confrontation over water. Now it's not going to be a like big bang. It's going to be something that happens over years and decades. But that confrontation is coming for certain. And there will undoubtedly be winners and losers. And uh, if you don't want to be a loser, you better be at the tables. 